So we have a test on Wednesday, November 7th, 2012. What I want to do is review everything we've gone over in this quick little video. So let's start off with the basics. We know that we have a triangle. In order to make a triangle, I need to use this theorem. Triangle inequality theorem. What it says is that if I have a side here as A, a side here as B, and a side here as C, in order for me to make a triangle, I need to know that any two sides, when I add them together, they have to be bigger than that third side. When I subtract those two sides, they have to be smaller than the third side. So for instance, if A is 3 and B is 4, what I do is, if in order for me to make a triangle, I need to know that 3 plus 4, which is 7, right? So 7 is the, the limit. So the third side has to be less than 7. And if I take 4 minus 3, I get 1. So I know that the inequality of my third side has to be in between 1 and 7 for this particular example. So I can have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are values that I can use for this third side. That is the triangle inequality theorem. Also, let's talk about angles now. So if I have a triangle, and I know the inside angles, for instance, let's say each one is 60. Those are interior angles. Now I have exterior angles. So if I extend the side out, I now have an angle outside the triangle. Well, if I know these two angles make a straight line, then 60 plus something gave me 180, and you should be thinking 120. So that exterior angle right here is 120. This exterior angle right here is 120. So we talk about interior and exterior angles. Now let's talk about the hard stuff, all those vocabulary words we try to get you to memorize. This is a triangle. In a triangle, whoa, that's a weird triangle. In a triangle, I have special segments. Se special segments like an altitude, a perpendicular bisector, a median and an angle bisector you have to know the special segments so in this triangle an altitude is from the vertex to the opposite side at a 90 degree angle that's what an altitude is a perpendicular bisector is when I have a triangle I take a side, I bisect it, so I find the midpoint, and I draw a 90 degree angle. So this line is my perpendicular bisector because it's bisecting this segment at the midpoint at a 90 degree angle. Then I have a median. A median is in a triangle it goes from the vertex to the middle of this opposite side. So that's a median. Then I have an angle bisector. When I have a triangle, I take an angle, I cut it into two congruent angles, and now I have congruent angles. Now, what happens when all those 
lines are going to intersect. Now I create a point of concurrency. Altitudes. Whenever all of them cross, I get the orthocenter. Whenever all the perpendicular bisectors cross, I get the circumcenter. Whenever all the medians cross, I get the centroid. Whenever all the angle bisectors cross, I get an incenter. See, that's why I drew these little arrows for you, so that you memorize who's related to what. So, let's see, what else can we talk about? Um, let's show you the rev Actually, you know what? Let's go into a little bit more detail. If I have a... How do I get out of this? Boom. Boom. Now, if I have a triangle, and I want all the angle bisectors to cross, so this... Whoa. This is an angle bisector. This is an angle bisector. This is an angle bisector. The characteristic, the property, the theorem of an angle bisector, whenever they cross, it's called the incenter. The reason why it's called an incenter is because this incenter is the same distance to each side which means this is the center of my circle with a radius that goes from here to here to here to here. I have a circle in the center of my triangle. That's why it's called the end center, made up of angle bisectors. Let's talk about another one. This is a triangle. I have perpendicular bisectors. So this is my midpoint, I draw a perpendicular bisector. This is my midpoint, I draw a perpendicular bisector. This is my midpoint, I draw a perpendicular bisector. Okay? So this point of concurrency is called the circumcenter. The reason why it's called a circumcenter is because from this point to the vertex is the same distance from this point to the vertex from this point to the vertex this is the center of my circle with a radius that touches the vertex and goes around the triangle so this triangle is circumscribed about the circle that's why it's called a circumcenter made up of perpendicular bisectors Let's do one more. Well, that was cool. So I have a triangle. A triangle made up of medians. I go from the midpoint to the opposite vertex. From the midpoint to the opposite vertex. From the midpoint to the opposite vertex. Whenever they cross, I create a centroid. The reason why this one's important is because if I were to take this triangle outside of the screen, and put it on my finger. Let's draw a little hand. Yeah! And then I took that triangle and I balanced it on my finger. E yeah! I would balance it on the centroid. So then it would balance because it's on the center of gravity. That's why the centroid is important. So we pretty much covered everything that's going to be on the test. Talking about triangle inequality theorem. Talking about interior plus exterior angles. Special segments. When they cross, I create point of concurrencies. These are vocabulary words you have to memorize to master on the test. Good luck.